to Wine and Time with T, where I am T, your hostess with the mostest, and I appreciate you. Let me give you a hug. Mm, thank you so much for coming over here, hanging out with me. I so appreciate you, so appreciate you. What are we doing? We're going to have some wine, all the wine. We're going to make some cocktails. We're going to start making more mocktails too, because everybody don't drink alcohol, so we got to make things so that everybody who's hanging out with us can enjoy it themselves, right? We're going to have some food. We're going to do a little DIY here and there. We're just going to have a good old time. So take your shoes off. Grab your cigar if you smoke them. Make sure you take that on outside because we do not smoke cigars in the house. And let's have a good time together while we are together. All right. So it's another day of Vlogtober. And today, y'all, I was like, what am I going to do today? Because what I plan to do didn't quite pan out. So, um... And then I was like, I know they get tired of me being in this kitchen, but this is my space. My kitchen is my happy place. So we back in the kitchen. We're not going to make a drink today, but I am going to have some wine while I cook. What are we doing today? Let's go over here and see. You see this big old thing out? This is my mixer. We're going to make some homemade rolls. Mm! And then we're going to make some vegan chili or it's just, probably just vegetarian chili because I'm pretty sure something over here that I'm using ain't vegan. Okay, so for the chili, we're going to use some Beyond Beef. How many of y'all do the um, ground beef vegetable soup and the ground beef ch in your chili? I'm going to use the Beyond Beef because like y'all know, I've been on my pescatarian journey since June and I'm still going strong. Here are our seasonings for our chili. Some Himalayan pink salt. A little Italian seasoning, some cinnamon. Yes, cinnamon is the key. Some cumin. Oh, sorry, that was on the counter. Some turmeric, garlic powder, onion powder. This is the holy grail right here. These two, holy grail. Black pepper, cayenne pepper or crushed red pepper. I'm going with crushed red pepper today. We got black beans. We got the seasoned ones, I think. Did I grab the seasoned ones? Because I normally like the seasoned ones. Oh, I got the wrong ones, but oh well. We're going to go with black beans, dark kidney beans, some fire roasted tomatoes, because y'all know how I love my tomatoes, some cannellini beans. I just learned how to pronounce that like a couple of years ago. Red bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, onion, some tomato paste, and some tomato sauce. That is what we're going to do, and we are going to cook it in our trusty, handy crock pot. Then we're going to um, do some bread. So, oops, didn't mean to knock that over. Um, we got some all-purpose flour. It's only a little bit in that bag, so that's why I pulled this one out. We need honey, butter, salt, milk, and active dry yeast. Y'all remember my I went and got that a couple of weeks ago and finally doing the bread. But we're going to make some rolls. These take a, This takes about an hour to make the rolls. And then the, the chili is going in the crock pot, so... I'm just going to let that cook until its heart is content. And here's my mixer. This is a Cuisinart. It has the dough hook. It has all the tools in there. I'm going to take them out. Um, and then the crock pot. I need to wipe all of that off because, you know, that stays in storage. So, yeah. And I think that's all we're going to do today. So, while, first of all, I need to clean the dishes and put the dishes away uh, that I have out because the dishwasher is full and I need to wash these dishes and put them in the dishwasher. So, y'all, let's. Um, y'all don't need to see me washing dishes. I know y'all be like, I don't know what it looked like to wash a dish, but I'm just gonna turn the camera just in case. Just in case something come across my mind that I feel like I need to tell my people what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera. Um, in the meantime, between time, let's get a little music going on. Y'all, who I feel like listening to today? I feel like listening to some. Rosé! Alexa, play Rick Ross Radio. The station Rick Ross on Amazon Music. All right, so we're gonna go with this um, Malbec. This is the Malbec. This is the one that I got from Trader Joe's. 
and I really enjoyed it. And I decided to decant it because I want to see what it tastes like after it's been decanted. And because in the store they hadn't done that, so it's really chocolatey. Lots of bright red fruits. I'm trying to remember what the lady said in the store. I can't remember, but I'm getting chocolate, bright red fruits, fruit, fruit, fruit. And like, I'm getting like current. I'm definitely getting some current. And like, I'm picking up a spice, but I don't know what it is. It's like one of them spices that you bake that's in baked goods, like allspice or coriander or one of those. Not coriander, cardamom. Coriander, girl, what? Coriander is a whole herb that's not in this wine. Although there are wines that you're going to get the herbaceous aroma from, but this ain't one of them. Let, let me, rude, cheers. We're going to have our moment. earthy very tannic them tannins is high and I'm definitely getting plums currants I like it it's really a good one um let's see it's 13.5 percent alcohol by volume it's an Argentinian Malbec um Blue, 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 blue. Let's see. And they, it was aged in French oak barrels. Mmm. Okay. All right. All right. But it, it's a good one. Um. So 2021 Belhara Estate Malbec. Again, it's a in um um. What I just say it was because I don't forget that fast. Did I say Argentinian? Yeah, Argentinian. Argentinian. The one from Argentina. It's good though. It's good. Oh, and and it's like um almost like a, a blackberry preserve on the finish. Ooh, little complex there. I like it. I like it. Cheers to you. All right, so let me wash these dishes and get this chili on because it's gonna take it a minute to cook in the crock pot. I probably could cook it on the stove top, but I'm just gonna go ahead on and um cook it in the crock pot let me get at this so that way i can start recording what we're here for so make some chili and rolls i was gonna make some homemade cornbread but i want some rolls because i want like the buttery pillowy soft roll so that's what i'm gonna make i'll be back oh, oh. i'm getting ready to cut up my stuff and actually i'm just gonna go ahead and open up my cans dump those in the pot open up my beyond beef and crumble it up a little bit if i can and add that to the crock pot i love that they put these pool tabs on a lot of stuff now when i do that it scares my daughter to death she just be like and i drain I just dropped some of my beans. Um, I dropped, hold on one second, cause I can't listen to me and talk to y'all and hear myself twice. I don't like that. Okay, so what I was saying was I do drain most of the juice from the beans. I do leave a little bit. No, mm -mm, I'm not gonna do that. Cause if I drop this on the counter, I'm gonna be mad. So I go ahead and put my red beans in. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put these cannellini beans in. Drain some of the juice off. These had a lot of juice in them. All right. So we drain most of the juice off. Good Lord. Some of them stuck inside the can. And oh, I'm gonna open up these other beans. 
black beans. Y'all, my can opener is so old. It doesn't even have the magnetic tab at the top anymore. That can opener, I have had it since. Probably 2000, 2001. They don't make things the way they used to. Drain uh, most of the juice off of the black beans. They put them in the, in the put them in the crock pot. Put them in the crock pot. And let's go ahead and go in with our tomatoes and the tomatoes. I leave all the juice in the tomatoes. And we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of this tomato paste in. It's only a little bit in here, so we're gonna go ahead and just put fun fact about me. I don't like textures of a lot of stuff. So I don't want to touch the tomato paste. I don't want it to get on my hands, like at all. I don't know why, it's just, it feels weird. So I have scooped it and then I'm gonna turn the bag inside out to get the rest of it. And if it touches me, it's like, oh my God, oh my God. It didn't touch me though. All right. So I have turned the bag inside out so that I can scoop the rest of the tomato paste out. This, if I had to measure it, I would say that it is probably about a good two tablespoons round. Then I'm gonna add, um, this is about, hmm, let's measure it and see. About a cup of tomato sauce. Now I need to wash this because I need that for when I make my, um, when I'm measuring stuff for the bread. All right, so that's all the canned ingredients. Now let's cut the onion, the bell pepper, and we're gonna um, crumble up the, the um, Beyond Beef and add that to it. And you don't have to add any water because it's chilly. All right, so I was gonna go ahead and chop up some, um, I was gonna chop up some garlic, but I already have some minced garlic in the refrigerator. Work smarter, not harder. And we're gonna go in with eh, about half tablespoon of, of garlic because I'm, I'm adding, no, we're gonna go ahead and go with a tablespoon. I'm adding garlic powder. So I don't need my breath to be super hot. And it's gonna have onions. Mm. This is about to be good, good. And it's not gonna be done by the night because it normally takes this a good few hours for it to cook. So if I put it, if the crock pot gets turned on at say 6.30, it's probably not gonna be done till about nine. Nine, yeah, about nine, 9.30. Cause I want the, I don't like crunchy beans. I want my beans to be nice and soft. so that um, almost like a buttery texture. So we're gonna, chop, we're gonna do a rough chop for the onions. Get all these onion skins off my cutting board. Um, we're gonna do a rough chop for the onions because if y'all remember, I like onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And the peppers, I'm gonna do the same. They're just gonna be a rough chop. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this real quick. And then what I'll do is put in my ingredient, I mean my um, spices and stuff. And I'll take the camera over to show you what it all looks like before it all is mixed together. All right, so, oh Lord, y'all, I forgot I had the spoon in here. Here's the pot we have, I used half of each bell pepper, a whole onion, and then that's the fire roasted tomatoes, the tomato paste, the tomato sauce, and then underneath, that's a little ice chip. Underneath is all the beans, the cannellini beans, black beans, kidney beans. That's what's in there. Now let's add some, um, some little seasoning, okay? All right, so we're gonna go in. I'm a spicy girl now. This is all to your taste. Everything that I'm doing is to your taste. So that's about 
enough black pepper, I mean red pepper, because we're going to go in with some, um, that's not black pepper. We're going in with some black pepper as well. And if y'all can't tell, I like my food to be seasoned, but not salty. Seasoned, but not salty. Some turmeric. Why? Because turmeric, to my opinion, it goes in a lot of stuff because it has a lot of health properties to it. I wish I had some fresh turmeric because I would add that. All right, so that's about enough turmeric. And you're not going to be able to taste the turmeric. Um, cumin. You could also, um, let me back up some so you can see me. You could also buy, if you wanted to buy um, the chili seasoning packet mix, you could also, girl, I almost spilled my wine. I'm trying to swirl it some. Um, you could also buy the pre-mixed chili seasoning packet if you want and just put that in. But I try not to buy a whole bunch of those because a lot of them are loaded with sodium and yeah, there's that. Um, but if you need like a quick fix, do your heart's desire and just buy that. Now, I don't tell you what I did. I used to buy the taco and fajita packets. I looked on the back to see what all was in it. I looked at Pinterest and I now make my own taco and fajita seasoning. That might be something I can um, do with y'all too. Make like some seasonings and like maybe the day before have everybody prep. And then the, day, the next day we can make it together. What y'all think about that? All right, let's get the rest of these seasonings in our chili so we can get this pot going. All right, so we're going in with the salt last. So this is the garlic powder. The Holy Grail part one. Yes, it takes all this. And the onion powder and because I'm not sure if those black beans I couldn't tell if they were the seasoned ones or not the seasoned ones normally stayed on the can so they weren't seasoned we're gonna add some some seasoning so that you know we, we like good food around here and then we're gonna go in with Italian seasoning which is a little trick that I learned some years ago um just add a little bit of Italian seasoning go in with your salt and i like pink salt violet salt and um sometimes i'll use black um black himalayan let me see if i have any to show y'all what it looks like <laughs> ghetto it's in a pink himalayan bottle but this is the black salt because i need a grinder and i need to just find a new bottle that's a grinder but that's the black salt and you only need a very 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 small amount of this because it has a very distinct flavor and I'll just put this back and I'll put everything else back. And then last, it's going to be the cinnamon. And you're just going to put just a little bit across the top. And the ground beef crumbles. You can use regular ground beef if you like. Um, but I'm using the Beyond Beef. And let me get some gloves because I want to break it up. And I don't really want to touch it right now. I'm like real texture weird sometimes. Secret trick. Secret trick. Keep cooking gloves or gloves in your kitchen. So I'm just going to take this up and I'm just going to break it up into pieces and put it in here. All right, we're going to go ahead and mix, give it a good mix. That tomato sauce is still frozen. I feel like I'm missing something, like a green element. If y'all don't follow, go to Plant Based Helen here on YouTube. She, if you want to see more like actual raw meals, vegan meals, um, plant-based, all plant-based meals, her channel has an amazing amount of videos. She's actually so good at like creating recipes and she makes, she makes walnut meat and I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. All right, so it's all stirred up. All mixed up. And let's turn the crock pot on. Oops, sorry. Let's put the top on. Where I put, oh, in the dishwasher. Let's put the top on and turn the crock pot on and let it cook. We're gonna get to this bread in a second and then we'll be done for the evening. 
and I'll probably have to, um, when I post tomorrow's video, I'll probably be having chili and rolls. I might come back with a roll tonight. Girl, I'm doing too much. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is, yes, I had to put my glasses on because I need to look at my recipe. <laughs> I don't, let me tell you, one thing I do is anytime I'm baking, I follow the recipe to the T. My grandmother, she could bake with her eyes closed. My dad, he can bake with his eyes closed. Me, I need my eyes open and my glasses on so that I can read the recipe. So we're gonna go ahead and preheat the oven um, to 400 degrees and we're going to grease our um, nine by 13 inch baking dish. And I'm using a glass baking dish. I need to find a one that I like that is um, not glass. But for now, we're gonna use this one. I was gonna say, where's my other one? Cause I have one that's kind of fall, like has like leaves and stuff on it. It's at my mother's house. So let's go ahead and spray the baking dish. Let's rinse it out first. Um, rinse that out dry it out and and let's, we're gonna go ahead and pull out um what are we gonna pull out we're gonna pull out our towel because we're gonna need a towel to cover the dough so that it can rise so we're gonna put the towel back and let's grab a towel that we can use for covering the um why not use our other um, fall towel? Yep, so we can use this because the towel is gonna have to cover the pan once the rolls go in and it's gonna have to cover the bowl so that we can let the dough like rise for like 15 minutes or so. Glass and just a glass. Tr um, my pan. And it's nice and sprayed. Did I get the sides good? Yeah. Cause y'all, I don't want them to stick at all. So spray that and set it aside. I gotta figure out, it's kind of late and I have not had anything for dinner. I don't know what I'm gonna eat. Well, it's not late, it's only 6.48. But I still ain't had nothing to eat for dinner. I had lunch late, so. Yeah, um, I had a big old bowl of vegetable soup with rice in it. Oh, it was so good. I really want a slice of pizza. That's what I really want. Anyway, let's get to making this because I'm pretty sure that there's something in the refrigerator that I can eat for dinner instead of wasting money. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is... You'll need two tablespoons of melted butter. So do it in the microwave because that's quick and easy. All right, so you're going to have your two tablespoons of butter. Add it to a nice mixing bowl. And I save the container because I melt more butter to brush on the top. A cup of water. I don't use cold. I use kind of like room temperature, medium. Like, you know, your water right in the middle. So it's not hot, but it ain't cold. So you want to take a cup of water. Add it to your butter. <clears throat> and then you want to stir that together. Girl, why is the microwave still open? I'm just gonna use a whisk just to get it mixed up pretty good. That's all. Cause then you mix whisk it nothing really. <laughs> but that's that. And then after that, you want to add in your milk and your honey. I think that's the milk and honey next, right? Ain't it the milk and honey? Yeah, you wanna add your milk and your honey. So you're gonna use two tablespoons. No, you're gonna use a half a cup of milk and two and two tablespoons. Yeah, two tablespoons of honey. Y'all, I told y'all I follow my direct shones when it comes to baking. I try to make sure I follow them to the T. So like I said, two tablespoons of honey and I should have sprayed it so that all the honey could just slide right out. But I didn't. So that's a pro tip. If you're using honey in anything, either butter it a little bit or spray it first. That way your honey will 
come slide, it will slide right out of whatever it is. Cause now look at me with honey left in the spoon. So what I'm gonna do is since this is warm, I'm gonna go ahead and stick the stir the honey up. Start <clears throat> I'm gonna stir the butter and water honey mixture because it's kind of warm and that way it'll get all the honey out of my out of my spoon. And let's go in with another tablespoon because that was only one. And you're adding honey because you want just a little bit of sweetness for your rolls. All right, so I got my two tablespoons of honey and what I say, a cup of milk? No, a half a cup of milk. I told y'all, I don't do this by um by memory, cause, and I don't even try to commit it to memory. I don't even try. Let's get a um half a cup of um milk. And you can use whatever milk you want. It does not have to be whole fat milk. <clears throat> We're gonna go with um, almond milk. For me, it would typically be oat, but I don't have no oat milk because that ain't what was on sale. Y'all remember I told y'all that the almond milk was on sale? We still using almond milk. We got two of them in the refrigerator. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this and then I'm gonna come back for the next part. All right, so make sure you're using a microwave safe bowl when you are mixing your butter water honey and milk because you're gonna have to pop it in the microwave you got to nuke it for a minute take it out stir it up real good then nuke it for 50 15 seconds to make life easier on myself i put stuff away as i use it because that way i'm done and i don't have a whole lot of cleanup like at the ninth hour all right you see it's steaming so you're just gonna give it a quick whisk and then you can go in for another 15. all right next you want to add it to your stand mixer so i have my mixer here so i'm just gonna go ahead and pour that in there all right, so after you, what's that on my hand? I think I just chipped the outside of my bowl. Focus. Now we're gonna do three and a half to four cups of flour. And I don't know what that message was, but we got three and a half cups to four cups of flour. This is two cups of flour and we're gonna slowly add it in. Where is my guard? All right, all right, so I need to switch my um, whisk from this to a dough hook because once I get this going, I don't wanna have to fool with trying to pull the dough off of that. But we're gonna go with one teaspoon of salt. You could use sea salt if you want, but I'm just using regular iodized salt. And I always stir, once I get to the last cup and a half of flour, I stir the salt in so it mixes in with the flour. I'm gonna stop this mixer. Oh, here comes the hard part. Let's get the, get it off of here because we don't want to waste it. Oh, it's nice and warm from, um, you know, from the milk and stuff. All right, so I went on and um, pulled out my dough hook. And we're gonna add in the rest of the flour and salt. We're just gonna let this knead for a while. Here's the deal. So the last time I made this, I added the yeast prior to adding the flour, right? So that the yeast could rise. It did not rise. So the next time I made it, I added the yeast to the mixture and it did just fine. Although yeast needs time to rise. So we're gonna try this the way that I did it the second time. And this should be um, two, you need yeah, a tablespoon of dry yeast. Sometimes these packets need a little, all right, so, yep, that's just about a tablespoon. All right, so the yeast is in there. Hopefully it works like it did the last time and it actually still rises. Y'all pray for me because I did it one way one time and it worked fine. Then I did it the other way the next time and it worked fine. Typically the way it's supposed to work, your yeast is supposed to rise and foam 
mine didn't for some reason so but when i put it in the dough the last time they were nice and fluffy so i'm gonna try it this, this way again all right so i sprayed the bowl and i'm just gonna take my bowl of dough out oh i forgot to tell you if you use a whatever you use whether it's a towel or paper towel to cover your your bowl make sure it's damp because you kind of want that steam you want it to be able to get some steam to it so you just put it in there and i need to make this more of a ball all right so in a little ball and my towel is damp and i'm just gonna cover it for 15 minutes all right so the dough it rose it rose and it says um the recipe tells you to break it into 15 equal parts my battery keep dying because um yeah but you cover them up for another 15 to 20 minutes and then after that you pop them in the oven for 15 minutes then you top them with butter listen y'all ain't gonna see my face for the rest of this video because my phone plugged up and charging y'all remember to like comment share subscribe thank you for coming by again love you guys peace See y'all tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll get to see the finished product with a bowl of chili. Love you. Good night.